Hey, what's up guys? Nate here from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles and welcome to this Sonic Academy tutorial on mixing with Isotope's Neutron 3 Advanced. We're going to be covering Isotope's suite of mixing tools in detail, starting off with the Mothership plugin and working our way through the various modules on offer and then taking a look at the sister plugins uh, Relay, Visual Mixer and Tonal Balance Control 2. Before diving into a mix down where we'll basically zero our mix and start over, correct a couple of issues using the various tools and end up with a finalized mix. Uh, this tutorial is aimed at both beginners and advanced users alike, whether you're just getting into Isotopes plugins or just looking to pick up a few mixing tips along the way. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Let's dive into the DAW and check this out. Right, welcome guys. We are going to dive in and take a look at Neutron Advance 3. Uh, first looking at the uh, main Neutron host VST plugin. Obviously Neutron comes with a number of other different plugins as well in the package. All the individual processes or modules are available as individual plugins. You also notice this uh, Neutron 3 visual mixer, tonal balance control and uh, Relay are another two little plugins that will get installed with this. Uh, we're going to come to those a little bit later on. These do not run inside of Neutron's uh, main host, but rather these are used for setting levels and helping with the mix assistant later on. Uh, when we get down to mixing a full track with Neutron, we'll take a look at those plugins. For now, let's dive into the main plugin and we'll just take a look at the sort of uh, general operation of this, all the controls, where everything goes. For those of you that have seen the Isotope uh, Ozone Advanced uh, walkthrough that we did on Sonic Academy, uh, this may look fairly similar. It's a very similar um, interface, um, so you'll feel, feel right at home with this. Uh, let's just quickly work our way through the top and go look at all the different settings that we have. So first things first, the naming section over here. This is quite important um, due to the fact that one of the sort of selling points with Neutron is its uh, ability to interact with other instances of Isotope um, plugins in your sessions. Uh, so you do want to make sure that your naming structures are correctly set up. That said, uh, you can edit this year from by clicking on this name here. Uh, I would highly advise against doing that uh, unless you absolutely have to. Um, I have another one loaded up here. Another instance of Neutron, so I'm going to show you why. I would personally prefer to do the naming from inside of your DAW. For example, if we type in a new track name, you'll see it updates automatically to hello-neutron. Um, we can change this, but if we decide to do a, a manually type in something, we'll say uh, Sonic. If we update our Cubase track now, to something else, Neutron will retain the manually entered name and you won't be able to do that. So you will have to go and manually re-enter that if you need to rename anything at some point. So only really fiddle with this one if you need to. Um, otherwise, I would stick to just letting it inherit the track name from Cubase or whatever DAW you are working in instead. Um, Moving over, we have the Mix Assistant. So this is another one of the sort of main draw cards to uh, Neutron is its uh, Isotope's proprietary AI-based assistance. Let's, without further ado, we'll jump into this. We're going to leave the balance alone because we actually need to set up an entire mix for that to work correctly. Uh, we, we're going to look at first is the Track Enhance. Uh, I've got a drum loop loaded into this channel and we'll just grab track enhance click next uh, we're going to let it order the tech because I want to just make sure that it is finding the drums we're going to do up front and high just to kind of get the most obvious results you can see where it's making changes uh, click next hit play Right, there we go. So it's made a whole bunch of changes. It's added a sculptor module, equalizer, compressor, compressor, and an exciter. Uh, let's quickly just take a listen to um, the difference 
between the two. We'll bypass it. So you can hear quite a lot going on there that Neutron has adjusted for us automatically. Right, uh, so from the Mix Assistant, we can just take a look here. We have our plugin management. Uh, you can select to have the show notes startup. Uh, I don't use the presets all that much. I'm not a big fan of presets when it comes to mixing because it's very kind of specific to what you put in as to whether these presets would work. But that said, Isotope has actually added in a ton of stuff here which uh, I guess are quite a good starting point. Uh, So you have bass for drums, you have acoustic bass, synth bass, everything is very well organized, uh, individual things for kicks. Um, So I suppose a good place to start off with just as a reference point uh, and to work from there. But fortunately, we do have the track assistant as well, which kind of um, negates the need for the presets as well. Uh, So yeah, I mean, go through these if you like. Uh, There is a really wide selection of stuff in here uh, to choose from. So you may find some good presets to aid you in your mixing there. Let's head over to these little buttons on the right hand side here. You have a undo history for the entire plugin. Any little change that you make will be logged here and you can actually uh, roll back the plugin state to any of these uh, history entries that you have here. This is really handy. Uh, very, very cool addition to the plugin. Um, we have a global latency mode. Now you'll see as soon as I push this, you're going to get an error message saying that Sculptor is unavailable in zero latency mode. Uh, this is because a lot of the other products that use spectral processing uh, like Sculptor, uh, especially with Ozone Advanced, a lot of the plugins um, are all these spectral uh, spectral effects. Uh, because of the nature of how they work, they need uh, quite a large buffer or that, that induces quite a lot of latency into your tracks. So um, clicking this into global latency uh, or zero latency processing uh, will obviously disable that. And we can take a look in Cubase. So you can see our instance of Neutron just to the right here. Uh, Currently there is zero latency showing on this channel. And if we enable, disable the zero latency, you'll see we have 39 seconds of latency now, complete channel latency on this channel. So that is a really nice little feature to have, especially when you are still in the stage where you are um, actively adding parts and recording audio or MIDI notes. You really want to be at uh, as little latency as possible. Uh, Further down the line, the latency is less of an issue. Uh, So that is nice to be able to turn that on and off. Uh, let's dive into the settings quickly because there's a few things I wanted to take a look at here. Uh, Tooltips, don't need to worry about that. Uh, the auto gain and true bypass I wanted to look at here. Uh, so you have to make a decision as to which is more important to you. The true bypass will allow you to free up CPU resources when the uh, plugin is bypassed. Uh, with a lot of uh, plugins, sometimes even when they're bypassed, that stops the audible processing, but they still process in the background or they still take up resources. Um, now, the issue with having tree bypass, uh, what you are going to miss out on is the ability to set the auto gain. So if we turn that off by making changes to our plugin, say for instance with the uh, compression and so we're adding quite a bit of volume with compression and saturation. When you bypass, um, obviously the volume is going to drop. So it will always sound better than your original, uh, seeing as the volume is higher. So what the order gain does is when you bypass the plugin, uh, the volume it will actually push up the original signal to match whatever is kind of currently being processed. We can take a look at that. Um, When we were playing this drum loop, some of the uncompressed uh, signals look very loud peaks. And then with the compressed one, everything is a little bit more down. So we'll just take a listen to with this auto gain off. And we'll hit playback. Okay, so you can hear the unprocessed signal, how loud those snares are. Um, Let's just jump back in here, turn our auto gain on. And play back again.
And they're much similar to each other now. They're, their volumes are being sort of leveled out slightly so that they are closer to each other when you hit the uh, bypass switch. Um, we'll leave the true bypass off. Another thing that you may have noticed there with the true bypass being turned off is it doesn't unload the plugin when you hit bypass. And that is quite annoying when you're trying to AB stuff. Uh, you'll see now it is much smoother. to bypass the plugin without that pause. So my preference is to leave the true bypass off and have the auto gain turned on. Um, you also have a channel delay here, which is quite useful. So aside from um, dialing in little stereo effects, you can actually set a pre-delay for the channel. Uh, much the same as you do in Cubase uh, on each audio track as well. Um, from here, uh, automatic updates, don't need to worry about that. Metering, we have some settings for metering. Detecting true peaks shouldn't be too much of an issue at the mixing phase. Um, this is more something I worry about during mastering, so I leave that turned off. Um, the spectrum as well, don't have to worry about anything there. Social, I have no idea why that's there, but the Neutron tutorials can be handy, I guess. And then you have uh, separate settings for each of the modules that we're going to look at as well. Uh, you don't need to stress too much about these uh, at all. Um, let's just hit OK. And now we come to the modules. So the modules can be inserted just by clicking the plus sign here. You'll see you have one of each available, except for the compressors, you actually have two available modules, um, which we will cover those later. Uh, transient Shaper as well, uh, Sculptor, Gate, Exciter, Equalizer. These can be freely moved around. Uh, the order can be changed. They can be deleted with the little cross sign there. Um, you can dial up presets specifically for one of these modules, so not an overall preset, you can actually have presets for uh, just that compressor, for example. Um, you also have a mix dial, so the dry and wet signal can be adjusted with that. Yeah, and that pretty much covers getting these in and out. Um, you'll see each one of these has different settings in this section here. We're gonna cover all of those in the subsequent videos. For now, let's just take a look at the right-hand side here as well. We have a limiter built in on every single channel. If you click here, you have some settings. You have a hard limiting, IRC2 and IRCLL. Uh, you also have a style a style gauge uh, or style uh, drop-down menu. You have clear, thick, and smooth. These are just kind of different flavors for the limiter. Uh, the limiters, you don't actually have control over the specific uh, attack and release times, etc. But you just need to dial in whichever one you want. Um, and the threshold of the limit is set with this over here. Let's quickly take a listen to these. So there are some small differences, particularly the thick, to me, sounds quite different from the other two. We'll leave that at clear and hard for now. Obviously, your output on the right-hand side here, and your input on the left-hand side, for setting the input gain into Neutron. You have some level meters here going on, uh, and then the bypass obviously recovered. Down at the bottom, you can sum the left and right channel into mono. This is super handy as well. Uh, I like having this mixing in mono um, as a great uh, thing to practice as it eliminates a lot of phase issues in your track. Making sure that stuff is mono compatible uh, is very good practice indeed. Uh, you have a phase flip uh, in the middle here, which will flip the polarity of the signal, obviously, and a left-right channel swap. Um, you can flip the left and right channels uh, between each other. Um, we also have some panning controls down at the bottom. Uh, drag left and right, or up and down, actually, for those. And uh, a width dial at the bottom as well. Uh, this just sort of widens the uh, stereo field. That pretty much covers the uh, host plugin. 
we're going to jump to the next video now and work our way through all of the actual modules, uh, starting with the EQ. I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you then. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.